Uh, maybe Ross, you want to go first? Are you going to declare war on Iran? Or are you going to create more wars? Or what's your policy? Well, I Iran has the option of complying with United Nations resolutions. The United States are, well, unfortunately, the Obama administration has been a little too reliant on the UN mechanism in the view of many experts. Uh, as, as you know, Romney's campaign is advised by former UN Ambassador John Bolton, uh, who's also been very outspoken on this issue. But we are leading from behind right now. We need to be more aggressive in our policies on Iran and Syria. So what can we do? Are we going to send more troops? Are we going to send weapons to Syria? Well, no, that's not what the American people want right now. But should we be taking a tougher line on Iran, sending weapons to the Syrian government to slaughter civilians? Absolutely. Should we be taking a tougher line with Russia supporting Syria? Absolutely. Are we doing it? No, because the reset policy has been a complete failure, the reset policy with Russia. On Afghanistan, should we withdraw? Yes, the American people want to, want to withdraw after over 10 years of war. But should we give a firm date? No, absolutely not. Those, those of you in the room who are experts in this field know we cannot telegraph to our enemies a specific date on the calendar when we're going to leave. They will just lay low, and once we pull out, they will attack in full force. It is a poor policy. Libya, it's been a major issue in this campaign. The fact of the matter is, the administration originally led from behind. They ceded leadership on, on Libya issues to Europe, which is poor policy because the world is looking to the United States to lead. Saudi Arabia was looking to the United States to lead, not to disappear. And subsequently, with poor security planning, we now have four US diplomatic staff who died, and then the administration misled the American public. Candy Crowley also misled the American public at the debate the other night. But uh, it's clear that the administration completely dropped the ball on this issue. And the leadership in other Arab countries are very confused. They see what the United States did to President Mubarak, an ally of almost 30 years. Yeah, we all wanted him to leave. His time had come. We knew that. But you give him face. You give him a mechanism, a way out, maybe let him get to Saudi Arabia or some other country. You don't leave him there to be humiliated the way he was. We now have leaders in other countries who are allies of the United States, such as Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait. They are very scared because the United States has almost no policy. Under the Romney administration, we will see the United States leading from a front position, not from a behind position. OK, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Um, since Candy is not here to defend herself, I would um, simply say for the record that all she did was to read from the transcript of uh, the President's statement in the Rose Garden. So I'm not sure whether, Ross, you are right to, to attack Candy. Well, uh, but, I think but she, she completely not, misinterpreted the remarks. I, mean, I think okay. she was just... Hey, President Obama was talking about the context of the anniversary of September 11th. With regard to the attack on the post in Benghazi, clearly President Obama was saying that the attack was a result of the YouTube video. He was not saying at that, on that day in those Rose Garden remarks that the attack on the Benghazi post was a terrorist act. This is a uh, fact. I think Candy Crowley twisted the facts. Uh, I, 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 I think it's not fair to attack somebody who's not here. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would rule, rule you out of order. <laughs> Stop attacking Candy Crowley. Um, how do you respond to the criticism that, that there's a failure of leadership on the part of President Obama, that you, you've been leading from behind, and this is not what the world expects from the United States? Well, talk about slogans, leading from behind, right? That's, there's no, it's just repeated over and over and over. Uh, and uh, another slogan, uh, Governor Romney will be tougher tougher. He's a tough guy. He's strong. He's going to show America strong. It's going to be tough. But what? What is he going to do? Oh, but we're not going to send troops. Right? American people don't support that. Well, then what are you going to do? Right? Well, we're going to be tougher. And we're not going to lead from behind. It's, just, it's kind of like a loop that I hear over and over. One thing that you don't do is turn national security issues into political issues. The Benghazi uh, you know, incident, travesty, was a horrible event. Uh, my administration, Secretary Clinton, we get information on a day-to-day -day basis, hour by hour. 
you know what? Sometimes information changes. That's the reality of the world. Some, in the morning, it looks like A. A week from later, it might be B. A month from that, it might be C. Okay? When this incident first happened, even before the Benghazi attack, when there was unrest in Egypt, Governor Romney jumped the gun and issued a scathing press release that Obama was leading from behind and not being tough enough and not being supportive, on and on and on. And uh, it, was, it was proven that he didn't even have the facts. And he's trying to make a political issue about this. It was widely panned, not by Democrats, but by senior Republican, well-respected uh, diplomatic people who served high levels of the State Department. They couldn't believe what Romney did. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's how I see it, and I think that's how a lot of American people see it. It's not some conspiracy, right? To me, it's back to the context of your policies. Um, you know, surveys have shown that significant percentages of Republicans believe that President Obama was not born in the United States, that he's Muslim, that he's a socialist. Significant percentages, double-digit percentages. So I think that that, that uh, has an input onto what policies you have. Okay, thank you. Um, now, the exciting part, we're going to give the students a chance to pose questions to, to Ross and to Jeff. So may I ask the student, those who want to ask a question, can you please line up with the microphone? Can you, can you, ask, can you say what department, what department yeah. is Yeah, and if you could introduce. I, I, had a, I had two written questions from a student called Nafis Ahmad. I don't know, are you here? Not here, huh? Oh, you're here. Nafis, are you Nafis? Okay, you gave me uh, two written questions. Can you go to the microphone and just ask one question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, in order to give other people a chance, you know? You, you, want, you want to ask a question now? Okay, so, and can you introduce yourself to, to everybody? I'm sorry, it's a little bit embarrassing. I think I forgot the question. I'm sorry? I sent it in quite a bit of time ago and I kind of forgot the question because you forgot listening the question. to the two candidates <laughs> actually came up with new ones. So. Um, I'm okay. actually fine if you just proceed with okay. the two that Okay, first, I uh, introduce yourself. Who are you? What, what are you studying? Okay, and I'm what year are you? I'm from Tembuksu College. I'm studying on material science engineering. Material science engineering, yeah. okay. Okay, what's so, your question? Uh, okay, so, because um, I forgot the two, so can I, can I just come you up with a... You, you, can, you can ask a question that's okay. in your mind now. Okay, um, uh, my first question would be with... Uh, Only one question, no oh, second question, okay, one so, question. So, so, so just one question then. <laughs> So close. Okay, the, the first question, would be, um, the only question would be with, uh, to Mitt Romney. Um, in the Virginia speech that you recently made about foreign policy, you talked about rebuilding America's military strength, that you need to refocus on building more ships, come up with a more advanced naval, a naval force to reinforce your presence overseas. But at the same time, you somehow magically talk about cutting down debt and the deficit in your budget. How are you going to increase military spending, which historically has always gone way over budget for almost every single project, say perhaps the AK-47? But every single multi-project has always gone overboard. And your, and your methods of cutting debt means cutting down on welfare and somehow closing tax loopholes. So in some sense, the math doesn't seem to add up, as like President Obama has repeatedly said. You want to increase your military spending to unheard of levels, but at the same time, you want to decrease the deficit. Okay. You can't have it both ways. All right, we got, okay, sorry, we, sorry. We, got, we got your question. Yeah, yeah, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry for taking the question. Okay, time. so question for, for Ross. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, it, it is a fact. Governor Romney does intend to, or is proposed, to increase military spending. Our military has been depleted by fighting two simultaneous wars in very tough terrain and they do need to retrofit. It's, it's a fact, it's, it's a necessity. And we also need to upgrade our Navy, as, as you spoke about. The United States, as we've discussed here today, needs to focus on trade. Well, an important part of trade, an important part of securing energy supply, is, is to have a naval presence. The, the reality is the flow of people and goods and capital does in large part depend on freedom of the seas. And we need a strong Navy to ensure that, and we will invest in that. It's about choices. Governor Romney has pledged, though, to bring federal spending down to 20% of the GDP. Yes, some non-defense spending will be cut, but 
Governor Romney pledges to do that, and we, sh we should have more faith that he could accomplish that than the spending increases we've seen under the Obama administration. Okay. So, sorry, so, so the only reason we should vote for Romney is faith, that he's going to somehow magically make the numbers work, because yeah. it seems... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's sorry. Uh, no follow-up question. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, another question, maybe a question for President Obama, please. Or, or we can ask the same question to both, both Governor Romney and President Obama. Okay. Please introduce yourself. Okay. Um